Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Makalasi and I want to go ahead and do a little bit of introduction to tarot cards and the Hebrew alphabets because if you've been watching a couple of my videos you know that I, I always reference the tarot cards and a lot of times people use the tarot cards for divination system basically um, you know trying to tell the future and things of that nature which is fine however the it could also be used more esoterically in conjunction with Kabbalah in conjunction with the uh, the um, Hebrew alphabets in conjunction with the tree of life so in this video I want to give you guys a quick introduction um, a little so you guys can have a better understanding um, and if this gets a good review I'll go ahead more into the Hebrew alphabet so you guys can have a better understanding of this. So what we have here is first of all you must realize when you're dealing with the tarot cards there is technically like two decks in the cards so you know you have the regular minor arcanas which basically just has uh, you know different elements because they're divided into elements which is earth, wind, fire and um, water and what happens is they're divided into d the, the four elements going from ace all the way up to uh, I believe it's um, the king so you have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you have the knight, and you know it just keeps going on into just like a regular suit of cards, and then they have one for like um, like the the what you can call the sword, which is associated with the air element. Um, then you have like the wand or stick, which is associated with the fire element, and then they usually have a cup, which is associated with the water element and then they have a pentacle which is, is looks like a coin but that can be associated with the earth so once you realize that you realize that they the cards are basically divided into two two decks there's a minor and then there's arcanas a major and from the minor those could be divided into different elements going from one all you know the different suits all the way one ace all the way up to uh, the king um, so then there's, so technically in the minor arcanas, there's four based on the, the element. But the major one is the one when you're dealing with uh, occultism that you really want to pay attention to. So usually if you have a deck card, I, I highly recommend people to get the Writer's Right dark deck because it has all the symbolisms there that's needed to, to tap into your subconscious. Because realize that when you're getting different types of cards, there's all different types of people who just do different types of things and, you know, they kind of get into their own little ideas and things of that nature. However, if you really want to use this for occultism into waking your subconscious mind or your consciousness or into ageless wisdom, it's better to get the ones that were was particularly made for that. And so the uh, the universal weight cards made for that. So what happens is when you divide them up from the minor and the major, you realize that the major cards basically has um, it has like you know the different cards associated with it. And this is what, it, what we're going to be talking about. So here I have here um, there are 22 cards in the major arcanas, and these are associated with the 22 paths of wisdom associated with the tree of life, which I'll go ahead and explain that to you guys. Um, in conjunction to that, there's 22 Hebrew alphabets that are associated with the major arcanas. Therefore, each card is assigned to an Hebrew alphabet. So when you ha when you what happens is when you get your cards and you divide the major and the minor, and you just put the minor away. And what you do is you look at the major cards and you realize that the major card, every single one of those is associated with the Hebrew alphabet. And the 22 Hebrew alphabets could also be associated with different arch arch archetypes that you, we need to develop within ourselves to get to our fullest development of reaching or re reuniting all of our seven bodies into our highest wisdom. So what happens is this is basically how the cards look like, um, and these are the, the the 22 of them. So what happens is if I have here a quote, and it's actually by, by um, Paul Foster Case. I don't know why the name didn't come through, but it says careful study of this tableau will reveal certain harmonies of numbers, which will be helpful in getting the deeper meaning of the keys. So usually this is how it looks like, and. For, for right now, because there are different ways that these cards could be laid, um, I have it laid here with the journey, the full journey on the top. And then what happens is you have the cards going from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8 is a new row, 
um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, a new row, and then, then it's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and obviously with uh, the fool, that would be 22. So each one of these, these cards right here, all these cards laid out, is actually the 22 major arcanas, and at the same time, these are also associated with 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But when I laid it out like this, you can see like the first row is the power of potencies, and the, the middle row is the symbols of laws and agencies, and then the bottom row is the conditions and effect. So, not to give you guys to get too much into it, so but basically, if you look at number one, you have the magician here, and what happens is, you know, with the power of the magician, you can balance the strength to um, overcome the effects of the devil. Uh, you know, with the high priestess, if she under, goes like a hermit and understands herself, she can um, awaken her ego and destroy her ego, things of that nature. So when you when you look at this, you realize that there's obviously um, there's there's deeper deeper meaning to it. But these are basically the twenty two arcanas, and they're associated with the twenty two um, Hebrew alphabets. So here on this screen, I have all of the Hebrew alphabets, you know, which is Alf, which is associated with Air, which is associated with the full card. And then you have Bet, which is associated with Mercury, which is associated with the Mage card, or um, the Magician card. So here you see the 22 Hebrew alphabets on the left, and then you see basically what it kind of represents with this numerical value. And then you have also all the way in the right hand corner, you see basically all the cards. So in essence, if you were to pull, let's just say Mem, which is number 40, that is associated with the water, but that's associated with the hangman card. You know, so when you look at, like, let's just say the second card is Beth, and that's associated with the magician card. So when you, look, when you realize that, you know that every Hebrew alphabet is associated with each tarot card. Now here on the left hand corner of a Kabbalah tree of life, and basically this is how it looks like. And if you've been watching my videos, you would come to understanding that this basically could be the symbolism of your physical body. This could be the physical. This could be the manifestation of basically um, the universe. This could be the way the map to evolution. So technically, right now we're on Malakuf, which is on the bottom, which is the one that has like um, a little bit of black, orange, green, and a little bit yellow in, in there, and all the way in the bottom. And what happened is we want to kind of go back, get back all the way up to, you know, Tabarith, which is beauty, which is kind of like the middle path, Tabarith, the one that says beauty, number six. And what happens is to go there, we kind of have to go through this process of awakening ourselves and, you know, balancing our subconscious, our mental, etheric plane, and things of that nature. Now, if you look carefully at this tree of life, you will see that there's different tarot cards associated with each one of the connections, or what you could say, paths to each sephira. And each sephira is basically one of these circles. And there's 10 sephiras, and there's 22 paths. So what happens is, and technically you could say there's like um, 32 paths to, you know, to awakening the 10 plus the um, 22, which is 32. And what happens is when you look at the, you look at them, you can see that there's association with different with cards. So in essence, a lot of times when it comes to uh, meditation, a lot of times um, what you could do is you can meditate on these cards. And what happens with when you meditate on these cards, it helps kind of align you with that path to awakening. So you know, so for example, if you go on Malkuth, you want to work from the cards on below, meditate on them, and understand them, and then work your, work your way up. Now, when you're dealing with the Hebrew alphabets, there's 22 letters there, but you have to understand that they can break in, be broken down in three ways, and I'll go ahead and explain this to you. So what happens is you have here on the left, you have the three mothers, and those three mothers are associated with the three elements. You have air, water, and fire. So that's how they are. So that's air is actually Aleph. You have water, which is Mem, and then you have fire, which is Shen. And then, then you also have the seven double letters. And the seven double letters is interesting because this could be associated with you trying to get back with your seven bodies. So each one of those seven letters, um, and they're called double letters, and technically 
if you just want to go into the language, the double basically means because it can be pronounced, the, the Hebrew alphabet can be pronounced in two different ways depending on the pronunciation that you want to use it. But at the same time, the double letters, if you look at this in esotericism, this is, this is the, the alphabets that would be associated with you reaching your different body. So, so basically, I go ahead and show you on the Tree of Life, but basically these seven alphabets, which is which I showed you in the other um, picture that's associated with the tarot cards, are the ones that you need to understand to access your different bodies. Because remember, if you watch my videos, I say we basically fell from Eden, which is just said, the fourth dimension, and what happens is we need to get realign ourselves back up and you know get our mental body together our astral body together get our etheric body together um, work on our different monads and then hopefully get in contact with a casual body and then we start understanding we kind of like work up ourselves up the Jacob ladders back to our full awakening to who we are as Adam and Adam being the full recognized man so that's what those seven letters are basically indicating. But at the same time, those seven letters can also be indicating the, the association with your seven chakras. And this is interesting, too, because what happens is a lot of people try to do, um, you know, which, which high-level masters could do is you meditate and you focus on each chakra to open it. But because a lot of people is not altogether in their astral, mental, or etheric plane, that's really not going to work right now because people are so disconnected with nature, especially with their different bodies. So when you're connected with your body, you can just focus on the chakras visually and push them up. But right now, um, you working with the cards and just and, and meditating on them is a lot easier because those cards will actually do it for you as opposed to you trying to keep yourself disciplined because right now a lot of people aren't disciplined and then you have the 12 so then you have the three mothers you have which is associated with the three elements you have the seven cards and you have the 12 which could be associated with um, the 12 disciples the 12 uh, tribes of Israel um, and the you know, 12 zodiac signs and then these alphabets on the right is associated with that so when you add them together you have 3 plus 7 equals 10 which could be associated with the 10 sephiras, and I'll show you that, plus 12 equals a 22. So when you realize that, you realize that the Hebrew alphabet has 22 alphabets, but they can also be associated with the three mothers, the seven devils, and the 12 symbols. Now, what happens is, uh, real quick, when you, when you look at, um, just to show you guys a different version of it, I have this here. So when you look at it from, just to show you guys how it, that is now is associated with the tree of life because I showed you how the tarot cards are associated with it, but now I'm going to show you how um, it could be associated with the tree of life. So if you see here, it says one, two, and three because the first one I showed you guys was showing you the paths or 22 paths to S. Sephira, and at each Sephira, there's 10 of them. So basically, each line that connects them is 22 paths, but then there's additional 10 that's associated with the Sephiras. So you have the 10 Sephiras, which is here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. And then you have the lines in between, which is 22. So these 10 plus a 22 paths equals 32. And then that's why you get that connection with the 33 degrees when they talk about Freemasonry. But here you have technically, now I'm going into the Sephiroth. So when you look at the Sephiroth, the Sephiroth could also be associated with the Hebrew alphabets. Because you have here 1, 2, and 3, which is the world of Asoluth. And I'll go ahead and explain that. And basically that is the air fire and water. So there you would have Aleph, which would be number one. You have Mem, which would be number three, Bina. And you have Shin, which would be Chokma, which is number um, two. So what happens is when you realize that, you say, oh, the mother letters are associated with the first two, three trinity, which I like to call Logos, Dark Terrestrials, Elohims. And that's basically where they come from. So all the, the three the three mother letters are associated with the Trinity. But if you minus those three, so if you go down here to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let's cut that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you realize that there is definitely seven of the rest of them, and those are connected with the seven bodies that we need to align ourselves with. So those seven is associated with these these Hebrew alphabets. Beth, Gamel, Dalath, Kaf. Heth, Resh, and Tav. 
And then all the way on the bottom, um, you will see that I kind of basically put Yahweh because if you see my video about the secret name of God, which in um, if you want to talk about it in Kabbalah, if you just say the Hebrew alphabet, it'll be Yod, which is Y, He, um, he which is H, V, which is V, um, Yohed, Yohed, Va, He. Okay, so the bottom one should be a H for He because He is duplicated. But just so you understand, like, so they're basically saying Yohev He is on the top and then the He is on the bottom. So when you look at this, you can see that the three mother letters associated with 1, 2, and 3. The seven bodies that we need to connect with is 10, 9, 7, 8, 6, 5, 4. So that's Melakut, Yosud, Hud, Nazak, Tabarith, Jesed, and Geberah. And then, um, so when you look at that, you can kind of start to see how things are starting to kind of um, take place. You have the tarot cards, which is associated with the 22 paths of each sephira. You have each sephira, which could be associated with the three mother letters and then the seven bodies. And then to make, to get things a little bit more interesting to see how it's a dissension of energy from the absolute world all the way down here, I have this chart. So here I kind of separated the worlds because now you understand that there's three mother letters and there's seven bodies. But this now is showing the tree of life in a different perspective. And this perspective is showing it from the manifestation world. So you have the first world, which is like the world of pure ideas. And that is basically uh, the world of archetypes, absolute. So that's where Yahweh is, all the way at the top. That's basically like just say when things, something is just an idea. Like let's just say I wanted to knit um, my dog a hat. So that is like where it's just idea, right? And then then you then what happens? It goes to the to the creative world, which is the mental pattern emerges, and which is the Bria world. So from the men, from that pure idea. And then it becomes creative. So then I start to say, okay, I want to build my dog uh, a knitted hat. So then I start thinking, what color? How big is her head? <laughs> how much yarn do I need? So then that becomes a creative world because then I have to, you start to mentally think of how you're going to do it. And then what happens is once that starts to happen, then you start actually like creating the vibrations with it in the formative world, which is below that, which is the world of vibration, the astral plane. And, you, and this is the world where, where physicists and chemists can actually start to validate your idea. So then I start, you know, okay, now I'm going to start, you know, forming it. I'm have to, I have to go to this store, Michael's, I have to go to my bank, I have to get this, I have to get the yarn, and then I start, and I start actually start thinking of putting it together. And then what happens is when it's finally manifested, it comes all the way down to the physical world, which is the Malakuth. And that's basically when I have the yarn for my dog Yoshi's headdress fixed. So what happens when you look at this, you can see that how the manifestation of anything happens with imagination or the concept of idea first and then it starts going into creative thinking and then it starts going into manifesting and then it comes into the physical and that's why imagination is really important now I really want to go ahead because we're talking about the alphabet I also want to go ahead and decode this for you guys real quick so if you saw my video about interdimensional warfare I talked about how there's like possessions and things of that nature and then a lot of the Christian church uses a cross so I want to go ahead and kind of break this down because there's a lot of Hebrew alphabets in here too so real quick so when you look at the, the middle of it you'll see that there's a cross so in this slide I have the cross which you can see clearly here now, if you go a little bit, you know, so we're starting from the middle of it, and then we're kind of um, uh, expanding the, the perspective from the cross. We're kind of expanding it. So when you open up the perspective, you can see that around the cross, you have the three mother letters, which is Aleph, Shem, and Mem, and then, which is air, fire, and water. So that's associated with the upper world of Asaluth, the world of ideas. Remember, we showed you that, the world of trinities, the, um, the world of... Um, things that nature. So you see around it, you have, okay, so you have the three mother letters, which is associated with the three elements, Aleph, Mem, and Shen. So then we expand it a little bit more. And then you'll see that there's the seven double letters around the three mother letters. So you see this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
And with the seven double letters, that is associated with your seven bodies. So first we go from the um, Asaluth, and then we go from the seven bodies, and then, and then you can see the alphabets are all right here. Beth, Gamal, Daleth, Kaf, Peth, Resh, and Tav. And then we, well, then we can expand it a little bit more, and then you can see that first we went from three mother letters to the seven bodies. You have to conquer, and then we went into the twelve letters associated with the 12 tribes of Israel, which is associated with the 12 apostles, which is also associated with the 12 zodiac. So when you look at it all together, you have the three mother letters, the seven double letters, the 12 single letters equals 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet, which could also be associated with the 22 major arcanas of the tarot cards, which shows you this 22 paths of the tree of life. Now, when you look at it from a bigger picture, then you see it, it looks like this. So we went from the beginning where it was the cross. We saw that we really went to the mother letters. And then we went to the seven bodies that we have to conquer. And then the, the 12 zodiac disciples, uh, Israel's. And then if you look on the, all in the outer part, you also see there's a red, yellow, blue, and a, a multicolor one at the bottom. That right there is associated with elements. Yellow is air, red is fire, blue is water, and at the bottom is earth. Now, earth is a combination. Now, if you look at the mother letters, you'll realize that they don't have earth there. What they basically have is um, they have they have air, fire, water, but they don't have earth. Because when you realize it, earth is actually the manifestation of actually all three of them. So we have air, fire, water, and in co combination to working together, it manifests as earth. So earth is kind of like, is, is kind of like, she can create all that on her own, but it's, it's like the, the fourth element. So when you look at this from this perspective, you can see you have the mother, le the, the mother, um, the mother letters, which is elements, the seven bodies, and then you have the 12 alphabets, the, you know, the seven doubles, then the, t the 12 singles, and then on the outside you have the elements. Now when you realize you're looking at that, what you're really doing is you're looking at the tree of life going down, and you can look at it going from up. So technically, this picture here is symbolizing you the tree of life in an alternative perspective. So even if you look at the inside of the cross, you see it has like all the way in the inside, before, on top of the mother letter is a little cross, but then on the outside is, is, is another cross as well. So in essence, you could say it's like, as above, so below. Now, um, if you remember my video, I had a video about interdimensional, uh, understanding the fourth and fifth dimension from your 3D perspective. And I also talk about how basically in the third dimension we can have height, um, length, but then we also have depth. And I said, so basically if you look at this apple, it looks like a third dimensional apple, but when you lay it out, it would look like this in a second dimensional perception. Now this is kind of not really fair because I put shadows in here, so you can kind of see the shadow which kind of represents the third dimension. But if those shadows weren't there, um, it wouldn't look as 3D as it does. It would just be a whole bunch of circles. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when you realize that, you realize that when you're looking at the tree of life, which looks something like this, where you have you have the three, which is the mother, the mother letters, one, two, three. You have the seven, which is around it, and then twelve zodiac. It would look more like, like this. So, so what happens is you're looking at the tree of life from a different perspective, where instead of looking at going um, hor vertically, you're looking at it kind of like impressed on each other. So you have like three mothers, which is Asaluth, and then you have. Um, the test seven zodiac, which is all the way down to um, Malakuth, and then you have the twelve zodiacs, which is talking about the whole zodiac, and then you have the elements because that's basically where we're at. So when you realize that, and you can see that it, it gives a totally interesting perspective and is trying to remind you through the alphabets and through symbolism that there is like like there is like a, a Jacob's ladder that we need to climb up. 
And at the same time, if you ever look, if you ever, you look at this middle of it, you'll realize that it kind of looks like a rose. There's different petals. And the rose is also a symbolism in a lot of occult circles. There's a lot of spirituality. Um, when they do meditations, they try to teach people through spirit, psychic awareness. They always try to use a rose. And basically, that rose is a representation of you in your physical form, a Malakuth, as an unfolding. So if you, uh, the rose is open and big and wide, that means your consciousness is unfolding. However, it's, if it's closed or dwindled or not that great, that's showing that your consciousness is a little bit lower and, and needs to be worked on. So when you realize that, you realize that the tree of life also works with, shows you the map of your body. Um, in, in conjunction with the Hebrew alphabet, it shows you the map of how you can get back on track. But at the same time, it also shows you how uh, the tarot cards can be used in conjunction with, with the Kabbalah, in conjunction with the Tree of Life. And then also when you understand the past and then understand that you have to work on working, the, getting t uh, more aligned with your seven bodies, it shows you how you can use the seven the double layered letters of the Hebrew alphabet in conjunction with the tarot cards as a form to either meditate on the cards because even the cards have symbolism in them, but even the Hebrew alphabet itself is like a hieroglyphics where basically it's a letter, but even in the letter has symbolisms that represent an idea. So even though like Shen looks is basically means fire, you can look at it and actually see a fire. Or Yod looks like hand, you can actually look at it and see a hand. So even though it's just a letter, like you know, like our letter would be just A and B. It doesn't look like anything. Where the Hebrew alphabets were specifically made to um, invoke images from the subconscious mind. Because usually when you're dealing with the subconscious mind, you're dealing with uh, patterns and thoughts and pictures. It, does, it doesn't understand language. So what happens is when you're dealing with the pictures and things of that nature, especially when you're at the tarot cards and the Hebrew alphabets, you're actually working with your subconscious mind, trying to get it back on track. Especially not in the material world because a lot of times we're just being flashed um, subliminally intentionally and unintentionally with messages that our subconscious mind is just like taking in and processing. So with these, it kind of helps bring it back into focus and then hopefully get you guys back in line with your left and right hemisphere. And then also when you're working with activating the um, Kundalini, you have to understand Malakuth. That's why I have this one here, which is associated with the five elements because Malakuth will, is access to the, the three different elements plus earth because you realize that each even even on the higher world the elements are just as important as it is down here there's no transcending it so a lot of times when people are dealing with spirituality um, it's very important to, to make sure that they are talking about the elements like um, the elements should be a prerequisite to anything like that is what's going to help you activate your kundalini and help you activate your consciousness and help you understand the higher worlds because without it, you are going to basically be stuck on Malakuth. So that's my quick video. I hope you guys like it and I'll see you in my next.